Hey guys, welcome back to Sparkman Homestead. My name is Krista. We are in the kitchen today and I have decided that I am gonna kind of do a last minute canning session. Um, I last week kind of had a little bit of a disaster in my pantry. If you follow me on Instagram, you pretty much already know about this. I am very, very active in my Instagram stories and I try to keep you guys up to date on everything kind of going on in my life on there. Um, I will leave a link in the video description or on the bottom if you wanna follow along with me over there. But anyways, I had a little bit of an experience last week with something in my pantry. I was going to make my granola and I went to go and pull out my rolled oats. And beside my rolled oats, I had my glass gallon jar full of brown rice. And I noticed that something was moving in it. And I'm like, no. And sure enough, somehow bugs had got into my brown rice. So I went and checked my five gallon bucket and it, it was full of bugs. And I thought, how the heck are bugs getting in here? Because I have an oxygen absorber and I am not opening and closing that at all. And what I noticed upon going and emptying that whole bucket out in my compost. So that was five gallon bucket full to the top, full of brown rice, organic brown rice at that, that I had purchased from Azure Standard. Um, so as I was dumping it out, I noticed that the whole bottom of that pail had completely cracked in half. So hum somehow, I, they look like they were gnats. They did not look like pantry moss, where when my stuff that is on the shelf, like this, for example, this is a gallon jar. I keep that stuff in my pantry, in my kitchen, so it's easy access. And when it gets low, I bring the five gallon bucket in and I fill it up. And I guess I didn't notice that. And when I was filling my brown rice bucket, like my container up, it got contaminated with the bug stuff. So anyways, I started going through everything in my pantry to make sure that there was nothing in anything else. I checked the bottom of all of my other buckets and everything looks to be fine. I am gonna kind of keep a really close eye on it though. But as I was going through everything, I noticed that I had this gallon container full of lentils. And I have kind of already been thinking lately that I wanted to start to incorporate one meatless meal per week for us. Just for budget purposes, if you can incorporate one meatless meal per week, you can save a lot of money. In order to try to reduce our food budget a little bit more, I mean, I am pretty tight with it already, but in order to reduce it a little bit more, I am wanting to start to incorporate one meatless meal per week. So I thought I would get some lentils canned up and that way I have easy access to some quick meals. Um, lentils don't take very long to cook from scratch anyways. They're very, very quick bean to cook. They don't require any pre-soaking, so you don't have to soak overnight, and they don't require a long cooking period. So we are going to make a lentil meal tonight, and we are going to can some lentils. So for tonight's supper, I am going to make a shepherd's pie, and I'm going to use lentils instead of ground beef. This recipe is delicious. I used to make it all the time. My kids loved it and it was just, it's just a really filling hearty dish. It's perfect. Since it's like stormy outside, it's not cold, but it's stormy. I thought shepherd's pie would be really nice to do. Plus I thought it was a perfect example to show you guys how you can incorporate some meatless meals into your menu every week. The third thing that I thought we would get done today also is because we are now just starting garden season, I have some of this um, shredded zucchini in my freezer and I have about I think seven bags of that in my freezer I need to get it used so tonight I thought for a nice dessert we could make a chocolate zucchini muffin I'm gonna be using the recipe from this cookbook and it is called an oil free chocolate zucchini muffin if you have this cookbook it is located on page 227 it's a really, really good recipe. I have made it before. I really do appreciate this cookbook. Now it is vegan. I am not vegan. We eat eggs, we drink milk, and we eat meat. So we are not a vegan household. But the reason I decided to hold on to this is because this, as it says right here on the title, real whole foods. Like that is perfect. It's perfect to have this book available going into gardening season when I'm gonna be overloaded 
Lord willing, overloaded with fresh produce. This recipe that we're making today is vegan. Now I am going to tweak it a little bit. Some of this stuff in here, I know what is a replacement for eggs and obviously dairy. They are just saying a, a non-dairy milk. So I know where I can kind of add an egg in and where what I can substitute. So what I will do is when I am making this recipe with you guys, I will just kind of tell you where I'm tweaking it a little bit so that if you do want to like actually follow the recipe, um, I'm going to see, she does have a blog. I am going to see if I can find this recipe on her blog. And if I can, I will link it for you guys because it's, a, it's again, it's a really good recipe. This is not a sugar-free recipe though. This does have sugar in it. Um, it doesn't have a lot of it in it though. So that's kind of nice. I guess we will get started with getting our lentils canned up. Now, as I was saying before, lentils are so easy to make. They do not require a pre-soaking before you make them. Um, it's pretty much all I have to do is get these good and rinsed off. And then from there, we're just gonna add half a cup of these lentils to our pint-sized jars. We're not gonna can a, a crazy amount today because again, I'm only trying to incorporate like one meal a week. If, if it's a good week, we'll get maybe two in. <laughs> we'll be really good for the budget. But I'm not only gonna can, I think I got nine jar, I think I got nine jars cleaned up. So we're only gonna do nine jars. But you can kind of, with the way that I'm making it, you can make as many jars as you like. All as you're doing is you're taking half a cup of these dried lentils into a pint-sized jar, and then you're gonna top it up to one inch headspace with boiling water, and that is it. Now, because these are a bean, we do have to pressure can them. So this is not a water bath method. This is going to be a pressure canner and we are going to be pressure canning them for 75 minutes. Anything like meat, beans, certain vegetables, you have to pressure can because the acidity level is not where it needs to be to safely be water bath canned. So unfortunately, we're gonna be sitting here for 75 minutes kind of babysitting it but that is the perfect opportunity to get those zucchini muffins made. So we're just gonna kind of get it all done today. It's really late in the day. It's already 1.45, but that's perfect. I mean, we have lots of time. So what we're gonna do, we have a half cup of measuring cup here. We're just gonna take half a cup of lentils and add them in here. So we're gonna do nine jars. So I'm gonna just measure out nine of these. So that's nine cups. The reason why we're rinsing them, I don't know if you can see there, but like there's little things like little debris like that in here. So we want to rinse them good and kind of get that little bits of debris out. It's kind of like rice. You just want to do like a nice good thorough rinse on it. We are gonna let these drain a little bit, kind of like rice, you just wanna drain them just a little bit. Uh, we'll get our jars out. The recipe that we are making tonight, um, it does say that you need to pre-soak the lentils. So I am going to take one and a half cups of lentils out of here, because this is how many we have left. So I'm gonna take one and a half can, or one and a half cups of lentils out of here and just kind of set them aside and get them pre-soaked. Normally you don't need to soak lentils. You really don't need to soak lentils if you have like a red lentil. I unfortunately could not find a red lentil at my Walmart. That is what I had available for shopping today. These are a brown lentil. You can can like a brown lentil, a green lentil. It's kind of all the same type of consistency. A red lentil is a little bit more of a delicate one, so it doesn't require as much cooking as like these brown ones. So I would recommend if you're looking at canning lentils to can either a green or a brown one because they're gonna hold up a little bit better where the red ones tend to get a little bit more mushier. So just keep that in mind if you're canning lentils and what you have available. 
So let's get one and a half pulled out of here. The other thing I have to get done is I need to get my water boiling um, because we have to top these jars up with boiling water. Um, and I'm also going to get my pressure canner turned on and get that water hot. Because we have hot jars, we're adding boiling water to those hot jars, we wanna make sure that that pressure canner is also hot so that we don't get any broken glasses. I'm just pulling out the one and a half um, cups for tonight's supper. You can see like just based on the um, size of them, how they are a very good replacement for like a ground beef. Plus the seasoning that we use in the shepherd's pie, you really cannot tell the difference that you're actually not using ground beef. So I got a couple of our jars out of the oven. <laughs> Those jars are very hot. I Oh, almost burnt myself trying to take them out of the oven. So these things come in handy, so do oven mitts. I'm only taking a couple of jars out at a time because I don't want the jars to cool down too much. I wanna get them, I wanna keep them somewhat hot so that they don't uh, get damaged when we add that boiling hot water to them. All right, so we have our beans here. We are going to scoop a half a cup of beans into each jar. Got our water boiled here. And we are gonna top these jars up to one inch headspace. Just gonna go in and just kind of debubble it just a bit. Make sure that there's no air pockets at the bottom of these jars. And then we are just gonna wipe the rim clean. We don't have to use vinegar in this situation because all we're doing is we're just adding um, hot water to this. There's nothing sticky in it. You can definitely, just as an extra, extra precautionary, you can definitely use white vinegar to clean these rims off. And then we will add our lids. Oh, the other thing that you can do if you would like, because we are canning pint-sized jars, you can add half a teaspoon, I think it is. Let me double check. You can add a quarter teaspoon of salt to this if you would like. Um, I'm gonna keep them salt free. I like to keep them very neutral. This way I can control the level of salt in my recipes. And we'll get these in the pressure canner. And we'll get the next set of four jars going. I'm gonna do four at a time. That way the jars stay hot. I just took those off because I realized I did not wipe the rims. So I just took the lids off so that I could come back and quickly kind of wipe them clean. Now I will put them back on. It's just water, but I wanna make sure that there's no like lentil pieces on the, the rims of them. Now these can go in the canner. So I have never canned lentils before. This is the first time that I'm attempting to can these. So I'm hoping that this is a good recipe. Um, I will leave a link for you guys below in the description to where I got this canning recipe, but I'm hoping that they don't get too mushy with the 75 minute processing time because lentils, like, they're super, super small bean and I don't know, I guess it's an experiment. Again, my favorite words, it's an experiment. <laughs> Rinsed off another couple of jars because I had leftover lentils. Just checking all of the seals on my lid just to make sure everything is good. We have to pressure can these for 75 minutes. Once it comes to pressure, we will start the timer. So I'm gonna kind of do a little quick cleanup of the counter area and just get my surface, kind of get my surface all cleaned up and get everything out that we need to make those zucchini muffins. 
That zucchini I took out of the freezer was rock frozen. So I just had leftover hot water. So I just have it kind of sitting in this hot water just to try to melt it a little bit because I don't want to use frozen zucchini in the muffins because it's going to cause the moisture to be a little off. Um, so I'm going to get that kind of defrosted a little bit and then strain some of that extra liquid out. That way we're not getting like a really mushy muffin. So I have one of these uh, muslin cloth or I don't know, flour sack, I don't know what you would call it. And then I have a strainer here. I am just going to pour this zucchini over top of this just to kind of get some of that moisture out of it. I'm just gonna strain it a bit. How much liquid's coming off that? So that was two cups of just shredded zucchini. If you are using a regular zucchini, it says here use about half of a medium one. The recipe does call for one and a half or one and a quarter cups of lightly packed grated zucchini. So this was two cups in here. It, it's not gonna be one and a half anymore because we just drained some of that liquid from it. But this, I measured this two cups of like the regular zucchini. So this is gonna be fine amount to use in this. The recipe is wanting you to make a buttermilk. Because again, this is a vegan recipe, it's going to show you how to make a vegan buttermilk, essentially. If you have buttermilk, you can omit this particular step and just use the buttermilk. I don't, so I'm gonna make regular buttermilk. So this is one and a quarter cup of whole milk in here. And I am going to add two teaspoons of some apple cider vinegar to this. You can also use lemon juice if you don't have apple cider vinegar. This is just gonna cause the milk to curdle, which makes it buttermilk. So we're just gonna leave this sit for a couple of minutes and let it kind of curdle up. But again, if you have buttermilk, you don't need to do this extra step. Our pressure canner has, um, come to, not come to pressure, but it's got pressure built up now. So we're letting it vent for 10 minutes. After the 10 minutes, we're gonna put the weight on it and then we're gonna let it come up to 11 pounds of pressure. And then after it gets there, then we're gonna set the timer for 75 minutes and just kind of babysit it and make sure it stays at that 11 pounds for 75 minutes. Long time but it's worth it. It is so worth it. I know I always, in my canning videos, if I have the pressure can, I always complain about having to sit and babysit it, but it is so, after I'm done the project, I'm so grateful I'm done it because it is so handy having that pre-made stuff on my canning shelf. I love it. It's, it's worth it. It is worth the time. So, like I said, this recipe is vegan, so there is a lot of things in it that try to substitute things like eggs and you just see the buttermilk. So this recipe says to use one tablespoon of flax seed and mix that with three tablespoons of water and set it aside. That is if you do not have eggs or do not want to use eggs. That is what you would do. So again, that's one tablespoon of ground flax seed mixed with three tablespoons of water and you let it set like you just set it aside and it will actually kind of get like um it'll get like a paste kind of um so you're just going to set that aside that is if you're not using eggs we're going to use eggs today so we're going to omit that step we already made the buttermilk so that is good um so now what we're going to do is in a large bowl we are going to combine flour sugar cocoa powder, baking powder, baking soda, and salt. So this recipe calls for two cups of whole wheat pastry flour. I looked it up and it says that I would be okay to sub in all purpose. I don't have whole wheat pastry flour. I'm actually ordering some this month from Azure Sander because there's a whole bunch of recipes I wanna make that actually call for the whole wheat pastry flour. So we're gonna use all purpose flour today and I'm hoping that it works. Last time I made this recipe, I did follow it to the T. So I did use the pastry flour. So we'll see how it turns out. <laughs> oh, the other thing also we need to get done is we need to add our uh, baking cups to our um, muffin pan. 
And I know every time I make muffins, I rave about these baking cups, but I love them. They are from Azure Standard. You could probably get them at like a grocery store also. I think I've actually seen them at Kroger's. Um, but I love them because they're almost like they've been already sprayed with something. They're like a non-stick and I love my muffins just like pop out of them so easy. I really like using these. The other thing, we have our oven preheated at 350 degrees also. We are gonna add our two cups of flour. Again, I'm using an all-purpose flour, but the recipe does call for whole wheat pastry flour. I don't think I would sub this for just a regular whole wheat flour because whole wheat pastry flour is going to be light and airy, and a regular whole wheat flour is going to have a different, um, it's made differently. So I would not substitute regular whole wheat. I would, if you're gonna substitute anything, I would substitute it with all purpose. But I mean, we can give it a try and see if it works. But that's just kind of based on my research. That's what I've kind of read. And next we're gonna add half a cup of sugar. I am using an evaporated cane juice. This recipe actually suggests that you use a succinate or a coconut sugar. It does also say that you can use a natural cane sugar, which is what we are using. So that is perfectly, if you wanna substitute it for some other type of sugar, like the succinate or the um, coconut sugar, that works perfect in this. I actually have coconut sugar, but this is too late now. Okay, and then we wanna use one third cup of unsweetened what does it say here? Unsweetened cocoa powder sifted. I about just put that in there without sifting it. Our timer just went off, so we're gonna get the weight put on here. And I always, when I add the weight, I always turn the heat down. I gradually bring the heat down to I'm, till I'm sitting about a low. And once it gets to pressure, it usually fluctuates around like low to um, a two on my particular stove top. So we're just gonna bring that up to pressure. Once it gets to 11 pounds, then we're gonna start our timer. Back to our muffins. So in a sifter, we're gonna add one third cup of unsweetened cocoa powder, and it does specify to sift this. I'm also gonna add, before I put this through the sifter, I'm gonna add my baking powder and my baking soda to this. So we need one and a half teaspoons of baking powder half a teaspoon of baking soda, and half a teaspoon of, what does it say there? Fine grain sea salt. I'm just using my Redmond salt. And so now we'll sift this all together. This is why I put my baking powder, baking soda through here because it's all clumpy. And then we're just gonna give this a stir. So this is our buttermilk, and I use quotations. This is the milk that we just made. So to this milk mixture, we're gonna add our egg, but if you were not using an egg, you would add your uh, flaxseed mixture. You're gonna add one teaspoon of vanilla extract, and you're gonna add three tablespoons of pure maple syrup. We're just using the, this um, Kirkland brand. get this whisk together and now we're gonna pour this milk mixture over top of our flour mixture and then we're gonna stir it until it's just combined it does stress in here that you do not want to over mix this that's just combined. And then now we're gonna add one third cup of dark chocolate, well it says mini dark chocolate chips. We're just gonna add just some semi-sweet chocolate chips here. But if you have mini dark chocolate chips, that would be delicious, that's what it actually calls for. It does say also that if you wanna use walnuts, you can add two thirds cup of walnuts chopped, but that is optional. We're not gonna use them today. And then we're gonna add our zucchini, which again, that was two cups of zucchini that I froze. But the recipe says one and one fourth cup of lightly packed grated zucchini, which works out to be about a half of a medium zucchini. And then what we need to do is we need to just fold this in. Again, it stresses not to overmix. But my zucchini is kind of clumped up together, so I need to get it broken apart a bit. 
switched out to a spatula. It was easier to fold it in. So I got my muffin scoop. I don't know what size this is. It just says 18th by eight um, muffin scoop. It is a really big one. Like if you can see the size of my hand, I use this one a lot for the muffins. So I'm just gonna scoop it in here. It does say to fill them, what does the mixture say here? It says three quarters way full. That might be too full. I tend to overfill my muffins all the time. We are gonna get these muffins in for 15 to 17 minutes. We will start with 15 minutes on the timer and then we will do a toothpick check to make sure that it comes out clean. My pressure canner is now at pressure so I have started my 75 minute timer. Um, again, I keep fiddling with the heat because I want to make sure that it doesn't go way over on pressure. So I'm going to get everything cleaned up for making these muffins and then I'm going to kind of babysit this for a while. This shepherd's pie takes about 45 minutes to like kind of get the lentils cooked and then we still have to bake the whole pie. So this is one of the reasons why I'm canning the lentils also because if I wanted to make the shepherd's pie a really, really quick meal and I already had the canned lentils, it would literally, I would just add everything to the pot. But because I have to cook the lentils first, it takes about 30 to 40 minutes extra to make this. So. We might get that started also, maybe well, we're waiting for that. What time is it? It's only three o'clock, but I guess it's okay if we have it made early. We can kind of relax for the rest of the night. 15 minute timer went off. We're gonna give these a quick check. Um, I don't think that they're done. They don't look like they're done. They are definitely not done. So I am gonna say that I'm gonna probably put these back in for another 10 minutes. Again, I'm using my Pampered Chef stoneware. Stuff does take a little bit longer with that. So we'll go another 10 minutes. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get the shepherd's pie started. This is a meatless meal. I am going to be subbing some of these um, ingredients. It calls to use vegetable broth in this and we are going to use a beef broth. It calls for coconut oil to fry the onion in. I have a little bit of bacon grease that I wanna get used up, so we're gonna fry the onion in that bacon grease. But again, I will leave this recipe typed out for you guys, so if you wanna give it a try, it will have the um, vegetarian ingredients written down on it. I'm just using what I have available to use. So the first thing I actually need to do is I need to get these drained. In a stock pot it says to use a four to six quart stock pot and over medium heat we are going to heat up some oil. Now it does say to use one tablespoon of refined coconut oil. We're just gonna use this baking grease because I need to get this used up. It's been in the fridge for a while. I mean, I know it will store indefinitely in the fridge, but I just don't need extra containers in the fridge right now. <laughs> and there's only literally a tablespoon left in here, so we'll just use this for this recipe. So we'll get that heated up and melted, and then it calls for two shallots thinly sliced. I don't have any shallots, so I have some frozen white onion in the freezer here. So I'm going to add I'll probably add this amount that I have left in here so I can get this bag out of the freezer. Because that's frozen, we're just going to give it a little bit more time than normal. It does say to stir it for about one minute if you were using the shallots. But again, we're just going to kind of let that cook a little bit longer and then we will add the rest of the ingredients. And now it says to add two cloves of garlic minced. We're just going to use my favorite garlic hack this. We'll just use about a teaspoon of it. Never go wrong with too much garlic. And then you need to add a tablespoon of some herbs de Provence. We'll just put in. I like to just kind of grind it a little bit with my hands. It releases some of the oils because it is dry. And then we're going to add about a half a teaspoon of salt. I love the smell of that Herbs de Provence. It smells so good in here. I think it's the lavender that's in it. So we're going to 
stir that occasionally and then it says to kind of let the onions get a little bit brown and then after that we are gonna add our lentils and our broth our timer went off again we're kind of working with limited space here the kitchen is very small um, I think see so I'm not coming out clean so I think we'll do that maybe another five minutes our onions are now brown, so we are going to three in the directions. We're gonna add our one and a half cups of lentils. And then we're gonna add two and a half cups. The recipe calls for veggie stock. We're gonna use beet broth. Okay, so now it says to turn the heat up to high and bring this to a boil. May have to add a touch more broth to that, but we'll, we'll double check. Okay, I had to put my glasses on so I could read the directions. <laughs> <laughs> was struggling there. Put them on. Okay, so it is now at a full boil. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it down to a simmer. We're gonna put a lid on it. And then we are gonna let this cook for about 35 to 40 minutes until the lentils are tender and all of that stock has been absorbed. I did not add any more stock to it. I just did the two and a half cups. Um, then after that 35, 40 minutes, we're gonna come back and we're gonna add some other ingredients to that. The muffins are all done, we just took them out. So we are gonna get them to cool. I'm gonna get a cooling rack over there. Um, what I'm doing right now, I'm just getting some potatoes peeled because we need to have mashed potatoes for the top of the shepherd's pie. The problem is, is I don't have any available stove top. So I'm gonna have to wait until that lentil mixture is done because we still have 40 minutes left on our pressure canner. So once that lentil is done, then we'll take that off and we'll get our potatoes boiled and then we'll make some mashed potatoes. Okay, we're waiting for everything to finish. I have a muffin. I'm gonna show you guys, but these are so, so good. Just delicious. You would not even be able to tell that there was absolutely no oil and very low sugar and zucchini in here. It's it's a really, really good recipe. Super good. I was gonna wait for dessert, but I might as well eat it now. I'm an adult. I can eat my sweet before dessert. This is cooking a lot quicker than I thought. Like you can see that a lot of the broth has been dissolved and these lentils are getting good and tender. So there's just a little bit more moisture in there. So we're just gonna cook it off just a little bit more but I'm keeping a close eye on it because I don't want it to burn. When I used to make this recipe, I used to use canned lentils. It bypassed this whole step, and when I had little kids, like really little kids, I needed to have a meal like this, and I couldn't really, I didn't want to wait around for 40 minutes for the lentils to cook. So canned lentils were my saving grace when it came to making this recipe. Um, that is another reason, again, why I'm canning these lentils because I want to be able to have that option of having that really quick meal just to throw together. The other thing you will notice is that I put onions in this. I normally do not cook with onions because my husband does not like them, but he is not eating supper tonight with us. So... I can put onions in this. <laughs> but typically, I would have omitted the onions. If he was going to be eating this with me, I would um, have omitted them. I'm thinking that this recipe also would be a really good one to make ahead and throw into the freezer. I am almost debating, because it's just myself eating it, I am almost debating just making this in almost two small um, casserole dishes and then freezing one of them. I'm gonna actually check and see if I have any tin foil casserole dishes that I could put in the freezer. So I found these cake pans in my pantry back there. I think what I'm gonna do, I have three of them. I think what I'm gonna end up doing is seeing if I can make that like that's enough mixture to be able to put in three containers. It might only be enough for two, which is fine. So we'll make two separate containers. We will cook one and then the other one, what we'll do is we'll put it in the freezer and then I will have another really quick freezer meal that I can make when Steven is not eating and let's say I'm outside busy in the garden, I can quickly just defrost this in the morning and then I'll have a shepherd's pie pre-made. So there we go, freezer meal. I had to go upstairs quickly to get some laundry put away. And in that time frame, these started to stick. 
They're mushy, but that's how lentils get when they are cooked. Just take that off the heat and we're gonna actually get this on there now. These are our mashed potatoes that we're gonna get made. In this recipe, it says to use two tomatoes cut into half inch size dices. We're gonna use some of our canned diced tomatoes in this. Um, I'm wondering if I should drain them because this is pretty, pretty sticky. Um, I'm gonna drain these a little bit. Okay, so I'm just gonna add a pint of diced tomatoes. These diced tomatoes have no seasoning in them, no salt, no nothing. They're just tomatoes that have been cut up and canned. And so we're just gonna get that stirred in. The tomatoes are optional. You do not need to add them if you do not want to add them to this. Um, the other thing that is also optional is peas and corn. I am going to add some frozen peas to this right now. Because this mixture is still warm, I have frozen peas here. I'm just gonna dump this bag in. These are almost freezer burnt. So we're just gonna stir these in. Hopefully they'll melt a bit. They're kind of in like an ice block right now. So I'm hoping that they melt because I don't have a stove top to put them on. Maybe just leave them for a minute and if they don't melt, we'll just quickly put them back on the stove top once those potatoes are done. We only have 10 more minutes left on our pressure canner, which is nice. So I just have these trays on these cookie sheets because these trays are really, really flimsy. So it's easier for me to put, this is the one that's gonna go into the freezer. So it's easy for me to do that. So the peas all ended up melting in here, which was perfect. When I used to make this recipe for the kids, I did not put the tomatoes in it because they did not like the big tomato chunks. Um, if you still kind of wanted the tomato flavor and your kids or somebody in your family does not like tomatoes or they're picky with the texture of them, you could probably get away with using a tomato paste in this and it would probably taste pretty good also. Um, but the, my kids love the peas and the corn in this, but I don't hardly have any corn left and I really don't want to, I want to save it. So I'm not going to use corn today. So what we're gonna do is, because we're doing two of these dishes, I am going to divide this mixture into these two dishes. I promise you it tastes a lot better than it looks. Because <laughs> I will admit it does not look the best, but it does taste delicious. The second optional thing that I did not do when I was making this for my kids was you can actually um, take a bunch of collards, about a half a pound of collards, and then the about a half cup of broth. The recipe says vegetable broth. We were using beef broth. And you can actually saute the, the collards into that broth and then lay a layer of them on top of this. We have some southern greens canned up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these and I'm just gonna heat them up because these have already been sauteed and these actually have bacon pieces in them as well. So that'll be even better. So I'm gonna heat this up and then I'm gonna put a layer of that over top of this um, lentil mixture. Have the chard all heated up. Just taking this chard and I'm just gonna lay a little bit on the top. Again, this is completely optional. You do not need to do this. Like if you don't think, if you don't enjoy greens or you don't think that your kids or anyone in your family would eat them, then definitely omit this step. Again, I used to omit this step when I was making this for the kids, but I love greens. So I'm gonna put it on. And I guess this is not completely meatless because my greens have bacon in them. <laughs> well, it's not meatless because I use beef broth also, but. Again, you don't need to do these. You can just saute collard greens in some veggie stock if you wanna keep it vegetarian. And then we're gonna take our mashed potatoes that we just made. We're just gonna spoon them on top. I have my oven preheated at 350 degrees right now also. And I'm just gonna do a really thin layer of potatoes. I don't like too much mashed potatoes. So our oven just came to temperature. We're gonna get this one in here. We're gonna set the timer for 30 minutes. 
One thing that I like to do is after the 30 minutes, I like to take it out and put a little bit of cheese on top of it and then throw it underneath the broiler and let that cheese melt. It's really, really good. So the second one that we have done here, I'm just gonna let it come to room temperature because it's still pretty hot. I'm gonna let it come down to room temperature and then I'm gonna throw it in the freezer, do a quick flash freeze, and then I'm gonna take it out and get it all wrapped up. And then this is a freezer meal that we got done. So super excited about that. The other thing back there, pressure canner finally is done. We're just letting it come down for pressure. It's almost there. Um, so what I'll do, oh, it's there. So we, what we can do is we can go and, um, she just dropped. So what we have to do is set the timer for 10 minutes now. And then after 10 minutes, we come and then we just take the weighted gauge off and then take the lid off and then I let it just sit for another 10 to 15 minutes and then I take the jars out. Okay, so we got those all done and out of the pressure canner. They're just gonna sit there for the next 12 to 24 hours to make sure that they get a good seal. Let's double check this shepherd's pie. I think it's almost done. So that's what we have. I'm probably actually gonna end up, like I said, putting a little bit of cheese on it. I'm gonna turn the oven off because it is, it is baked right now. Essentially all that you're doing is you're just warming everything up because everything in that is already pre-cooked. So I am actually just going to turn the broiler on high and put some cheese on top of it. A little bit of pre-shredded, I think this is mozzarella cheese. Cheddar cheese would really be really good, but I don't have any shredded up, so we'll just use mozzarella. And then we will put this back in the oven. <laughs> Gotta keep an eye on it because I have it on broiler and broiler tends to burn really quick. So I'm just gonna watch it closely and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like when it's all done. Beautiful. We got everything done. I am really happy that I kind of took that little pantry misfortune with the brown rice and it kind of caused me to look at my pantry a little bit more and kind of do like a little bit of an assessment on what where we have little areas that we can try to save money. And by me kind of incorporating this meatless meal a week, it, I think it's really gonna help with our budget. And I think that it's gonna be nice too to have a little bit of a variety in our monthly, our, not our monthly, our weekly meal plan, to have like a meatless meal, something that we normally wouldn't eat. So I'm super excited about that going forward. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know that that shepherd's pie did not look super appetizing because the way that the lentils look, it's just, it's not very appetizing, but trust me, it is delicious. I will type out the ingredients in the video description if you wanna give that one a try. And I will leave, if I can find it, I will leave a link for that zucchini muffin recipe because those are so good. <laughs> Again, thanks so much for watching guys. And I hope you have a great day or night whenever you are watching this. And I will see you on the next video. Bye guys.